Welcome to Unit 8, Video 3, Naming Ionic Compounds. By the end of this video, you should be able to name ionic compounds containing monatomic ions. You should be able to name ionic compounds containing polyatomic ions. You should be able to name ionic compounds containing cations with variable charges. And you should be able to write formulas for all types of ionic compounds when given their names. Starting with monatomic ions, these are compounds that contain no polyatomic ions, only ions made of a single element. The rule here is that we write the name of the cation first, and then the name of the anion second. Recall that this is the same as the order in the formula. The symbol for the cation, or positive ion, goes first, and the symbol for the anion, or the negative ion, goes second. The cation name will be the same as the name of the element. For instance, the Na plus ion, the sodium ion, is just called sodium. Anion names, on the other hand, do have a small change. Here we just take the root of the element and add IDE. For example, Cl minus is an ion of chlorine, so we take the chlor and change the ending to IDE to give us chloride. Therefore, NaCl becomes sodium chloride. The name of the cation is sodium and the anion is chloride. Notice there's no capital letters here. Nothing should be capitalized. Here's some examples to try on your own. Pause the video here and when you come back I'll display the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Turning now to compounds containing variable charge cations, Sometimes it's not easy to predict the charge on the cation from the periodic table. Elements called transition metals, which lie in the middle here, the yellow part, these are elements that don't have charges that can be predicted directly from their spot on the periodic table. Therefore, we need to indicate what charge they have, because they could have all kinds of different charges. Here the rules remain the same. We start by writing the name of the cation and then the name of the anion. However, we have to determine the charge on the cation in order to include it in our name. To do this, we figure out the total charge of the negative portion of the compound by adding up the charges on the anion. In this case, chlorine has a negative one charge. There's three of them. So overall, we have negative three contribution from the anions. Therefore, in order to give us a neutral compound, iron must have a positive 3 charge. We specify this by using Roman numerals in parentheses. Iron, 3, chloride. The Roman numeral 3 tells us that it's iron with a 3 plus charge, as opposed to iron with a 1 plus or a 2 plus or a, three plus, or a 4 plus or a 5 plus or something else. So the Roman numeral is used to indicate the charge on the positive ion. And again, we change the ending of the anion to IDE. Here's a list of some common transition metals that form ions with different charges. Iron, copper, cobalt, tin, lead, and mercury are the most common. In each case, notice the charge has been indicated by a set of Roman numerals. It used to be the case that each of these ions had its own name that had to be memorized. So you see that in the column on the right. Luckily, those names aren't used anymore. The Roman numeral system is much easier, so you can ignore the names on the far right. Here's some examples of this for you to try on your own. Pause the video here, and when you come back, I'll display the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice in each case we have a Roman numeral indicating the charge on the cation, because each of these cations falls in the transition metal area of the periodic table. Finally, let's talk about how to name compounds containing polyatomic ions. Recall that you have a list of polyatomic ions that you were given in class. There's also a list posted on the Haiku page. You will not need to memorize these, and you'll always be given this list. Again, we name the cation first, which may be a polyatomic. We use Roman numerals if the cation has a variable charge, because it's a transition metal, just like we saw in the previous example. And then we name the anion. This is usually the polyatomic ion. The name of the polyatomic ion will come right off the polyatomic ion sheet that you've been given. So for example, Na2SO4 has a sodium cation, 
and the anion is the polyatomic SO4 2 minus, which is sulfate. Find that on your sheet to verify. Another example, manganese hydroxide. Here manganese is a transition metal, so it needs a Roman numeral of 2, indicating that it has a positive 2 charge. Hydroxide, OH minus, is our polyatomic. Here's an example where the polyatomic is in the anion and the cation. So our cation here is NH4 plus, or ammonium, and our anion is ClO3 minus, or chlorate. So we have ammonium chlorate. Here's some examples to try on your own. Make sure you have your sheet of polyatomic ions handy when you do these. Pause the video, and when you return, I'll display the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Finally, it's important that you can also write formulas when given the names of compounds. This is essentially the reverse process of what we were just doing. In order to do this, first you need to determine the charges on the ions. And then you combine them in a ratio that will yield a neutral compound. You can use the crisscross method here that we discussed in class. So for instance, if I'm given the name magnesium oxide, I know that magnesium, because it's in group 2 of the periodic table, will always have a 2 positive charge, and oxygen, because it's in group 16 of the periodic table, will always have a 2 minus charge. Put them together and we get MgO. Our 2 plus and our 2 minus cancel out. Here's an example containing a transition metal. Here we're told that gold, Au, has a 3 positive charge. The 3 Roman numeral indicates the charge. We know again that oxygen is in group 16 and will always have a negative 2 charge. So we get Au2O3. We need 2 positive 3s to, ba uh, to balance out with 3 negative 2s, overall giving us a neutral compound. Finally, here's an example with a polyatomic, calcium acetate. Calcium, we know, is in group 2, so we'll have a 2 positive charge. And acetate, if you find it on your, peer, on your list of polyatomic ions, you'll see is C2H3O2 minus. We need two acetate ions to balance the positive 2 charge of calcium, so we get Ca parentheses C2H3O2 close parentheses 2, indicating that we have two of that entire acetate group. Here's a whole bunch for you to try on your own. Pause the video here, and when you come back, I'll display the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we learned how to name ionic compounds with monatomic ions by writing the name of the cation and then the name of the anion with the ending IDE. Then we learned how to name compounds containing polyatomic ions by writing the name of the anion and the cation, some of, either of which might be a polyatomic. Then we talked about how to name ionic compounds containing cations with variable charge. Here we indicate the charge on the cation with a Roman numeral. And then we practiced writing ionic compounds formulas from the names of ionic compounds.